Hello and welcome to St. Anne's. I'm Robin Sewell and I do the tours here at St. Anne's. Today I'd like to talk about two works of art that are probably the most misunderstood of all of the art here at St. Anne's. These were done by a very unusual man named Hamish Stuart Trevoranis and he had a very interesting life. He was born Hans Heinrich Treveranis in Germany in 1918. His father was a World War I U-boat commander and then after World War I became a conservative politician in the Weimar Republic. Now by the early 1930s, when Adolf Hitler came to power, his family fell out of favor and so they were forced to flee Germany, first going to Switzerland and then to Britain because uh, the family did have Scottish connections. So uh, the family changed their name to emphasize this and they became Stuart hyphen Trevoranis. And uh, Hans Heinrich changed his name to Hamish Henry. Now in World War II, Henry served uh, as a captain with the Royal Scots Greys, which was a cavalry regiment. And during the course of the war, he came here to Canada he met Marilyn Massey and married her. And then uh, later on in the 1950s, 1952, he competed for Canada at the Olympics in the equestrian events. Now, by the 1950s, he became very interested in uh, art conservation and he set up his own company. But there's another connection to St. Anne's. The rector, uh, of St. Anne's at that time was Canon George Young, who was also married to a Massey. And so they would have had a personal connection. And when our group of seven paintings were growing mold and needed a lot of work, uh, Hamish Stuart Trevoranis was chosen to clean up the paintings. And uh, it took him a while, but uh, once they were done, this is the story he told me. He said that Canon Young said to him, well, this part of the church looks kind of bare. You should paint something for it. And Stuart Trevoranis said, but no, I'm, I'm not an artist. He was just being modest. Of course he was an artist. Uh, but he was persuaded to do this and uh, he did it to the best of his ability. J.E.H. MacDonald said, the people here at St. Anne's are not going to appreciate Byzantine art I'm going to adapt my style to something later and more natural looking. But Stuart Trevoranis said, this is a Byzantine building. And of course he'd studied all kinds of art history. He'd traveled widely. He decided that he was gonna make his art suit the architecture of the building. And so uh, when I look at this, I see you know very early Christian art. <laughs> but I've had other people say, these look like amateur paintings, we should peel them off the wall. <laughs> but let's have a look at what's there. So this one, Christ in the Desert, uh, to my eyes, looks very early Christian. We see the central figure, which is quite large. And in early Christian art, what's important is big. And so this figure just dominates the whole painting. And you can see the whole story here. You can see uh, the owl inside the little cave. And this represents the wisdom to be gained from being a hermit. We can see what may be a jackal or a wolf, which is kind of a symbol of the devil who tempts Christ in the desert. I like that he has referenced the mountains that we saw earlier in the ascension. In the back of his painting, you can see the little almost Japanese mountains. And then there's the angel, which appears at the end of the story, up in the clouds. The background has a golden sky, which also reminds us of the desert and the heat, but it references the fact that the background of all the other paintings is gold, and it would have been gold in Byzantine art. When we turn to the other side, we can see Christ in the Garden. And this one reminds me of the early paintings of Giotto because here we have the whole story contained within the frame of the painting. We can see uh, Peter most likely down at the bottom of the painting. He's fallen asleep. 
We see Christ praying, knowing that the cross is to come, but we also see the events in the garden. We see Judas pointing out or uh, betraying Christ, and so everything is happening all at once. Once again, we have a golden sky, which helps to tie it to all the other paintings here at the church. But really, it has its own uh, style, which was chosen to go with the architecture. Despite the fact that Stuart Trevor Annis made different choices than J.E.H. MacDonald, uh, in the style of his paintings, there are things that do tie it to the other paintings. He kept the same style of halos, the golden skies. The other earlier paintings were all chosen to express Christ's divinity. But uh, these two paintings show a much darker side. They show the more human struggle that Christ would have felt. And so, uh, even though Stuart Trevoranis has kept certain features to tie it into the whole thing with the golden skies and the flat disc-like halos, he's kept the same robes. He's even referenced the little mountains that we see in the Ascension, but he's pointing to a part of the story that was missing. And, and so I would ask you, was it a mistake to choose this early Christian style of painting to fit in with the architecture? I mean, can the modern viewer look at them and appreciate what Stuart Trevor Ennis is doing? Or I want to invite you to look at these two paintings with new eyes and join us in the future when we look at other features of St. Anne's art and architecture. <laughs>